Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to be talking about this mask here. Uh, there is in fact one particular video because I tried to look for a video that shows this mask on YouTube. I didn't come across any of them except for maybe one. All right? And that guy actually had uh, a mediocre camera and he was showing it and it's pretty much sitting on a shelf and he was showing it at a different angle so you really couldn't see it quite well. And he pretty much showed it, and boom, the uh, the camera went off. It was that quick. But that was the only video I've seen based on this particular mask. When I purchased it, I said to myself, I'm going to go ahead and do a video, show you guys what this thing looks like up close and personal. This is, in fact, Ruby's version of Herman Munster from the 1966 TV series, as well as the movies that it spawned, okay? It is a very cool TV show. Uh, most of you know who it is. Uh, but long story short, the very coolest thing about it is the cars in the TV show as well as the movies. Some very cool looking cars, okay? But Herman Munster is synonymous in that. Um, and I do have a collection of uh, Frankenstein masks. You can actually see one up there in the left hand corner. Uh, I do have two other ones lined up on there. And I got a huge one up on top as well as a ceramic version of Frankenstein masks. So I do got a you know decent amount. Uh, but I will tell you this before we get into this here. I have another one coming in. I'm not sure when it's coming in. I just ordered it yesterday. It is based on the Mohawk Zombie from The Return of the Living Dead, the 1985 movie. Now, he is not in the movie itself, but he is on the poster art that was created for that movie. He is the one sitting on the right-hand side. Uh, in that video, when I do get the mask, I'll post the uh, image so you know what it looks like. Uh, it's not 100% accurate, but it is a very cool looking mask. And you'll know what it is just as soon as you see it. Once it comes in, I'm going to do a video on that. But anyway, we're going to talk about this mask here in itself. This is Ruby's version of Herman Munster. Now, when I first got this uh, the other day, I opened it up. And it must have been sitting in the warehouse for quite a while. Because the mask in itself stuck together. So it's been sitting there probably for a while like that. So one thing about latex, yeah, you got to take care of these. You can't just lay them in a box and leave them sitting on the shelf because they will take shape as they are. Latex has a tendency to do that. So I had to pull it apart. It was like sticky. But once I got it pulled apart, I stuffed the ever crap out of it, okay? Uh, because it took a lot of plastic bags just to get it to f uh, fill out because he's got a big head, as you can see. The one thing that disappointed me about this, now I will say this, I don't mean to criticize the company, Rubies, okay, but their masks are not 100%, um, how can I say, not accurate, but they're not spot on, they have their defects, okay, because they're mass produced. This one, when it first came in, the left eye was in fact, the pupil was not colored in, so I found that kind of odd, I should have left it alone. But I decided to go ahead and color it in with a little bit of marker. So it doesn't look too bad right now. But uh, there are, in your uh, pupils, you got to have like a highlight of white. I don't have a white marker uh, to give it that realistic look. So I'm going to have to do that sometime down the line once I find a white marker. Uh, but anyway, the actual left eye was not colored in. It's because it was mass produced and apparently they must have forgot to color the eye in. So I did it myself. Anyway, that's the only real defect that I found about it. Other than the fact that the way it came in, you had to pull it apart because it must have been sitting there and it must have been hot. Uh, that's another thing about your latex masks. You do not want to put them in a hot environment, okay? They will break down and deteriorate on you. You need to take care of them, especially when you're sinking a whole lot of money into these things. You definitely want to keep them in a cool environment. Now, as you can see, I did build a special bookshelf for my masks and this uh, room here is running around maybe 70 degrees, maybe a little bit lower because it's hot outside. I need to keep it cool. And it's important that you preserve your latex masks, okay? Now, Ghoulish Productions, they have a tendency to make their masks out of different material because they are, in fact, biodegradable, okay? But anyway, long story short, that's the only defects that I found in this mask. And another thing, I don't know if I mentioned it, I actually went on YouTube to actually look for uh, other people who had this mask, and there wasn't anybody on the uh, inter not internet, on YouTube that had it, except for one particular person, and he had a mediocre camera that really didn't 
you know, emphasize the mask. And it was sitting up on a shelf, so his camera angle was kind of wrong. So you really couldn't really see the actual details. You pretty much say, okay, this is my Herman Munster mask, and he shut off the camera that quick, okay? But anyway, he was the only one that I've seen that actually had this mask. I'm sure there's some out there. I just didn't come across them yet. But I wanted to create this video to show you guys what this mask looks like up close and personal. If you decide to go ahead and purchase it, I will tell you this. I think it's running around $40, maybe a little bit more, $45. I can't remember the price of it. Uh, we're going to move in close so you can actually see the detail. It's got really nice texture on the mask, okay? Uh, but just so you understand uh, what you're getting into if you decide to invest, okay? So I will be right back, and I'm going to show you what this camera, uh, camera this uh, mask looks like up close and personal. So I'll be right back. So hang on. Now keep in mind as I show you what this looks like, my arm is going to be super stressed. I'm not going to be able to give you the full view. You pretty much already seen that on the turntable, but I just want to show you what it looks like up close and personal. So you can see the actual texture. Let me just adjust this a little bit so I can see it. There we go. All right, let me get my shadowing out of there. Okay, now you can see the actual chin is dimpled. Okay. Now the lips. Okay, there. They got a little slit in them, say, so you can breathe out of this thing. I actually tried it on the peripherals on this here because the eyes are small and the slits are right here. It's not bad. Uh, you can actually see out of them, but it's just like my um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, the visuals, if you turn from side to side, are, you know, not that great. Okay. But anyway, now as you can see, I had to color in the eyes a little bit. Okay. I touched them up with a little bit of marker. Okay, and that's a scar. Nice big scar. Now you'll notice right here, it's got a little dimple right here. All right. That's because I got to still fill it in with some more plastic bags. Okay. It's a big head. Okay. <laughs> and towards the back here. Oh, get back over here so you can actually see it. Okay. The ear has a little slit right there. As you can see the blue right there. You'll be able to hear just fine, people. Okay. Here's the top of the head. Okay, it's flat, okay. Alright, that's what it looks like. The face. It's got a nice little texture to it, I will tell you that. The color scheme is amazing on it. Alright. But like I said about rubies, they're not high-end, but they are... Um, for the most part, they're affordable and they're pretty decent for display purposes. And if you want to use them for Halloween and stuff, that's all well and good. But what I do with my masks is I more or less just um, use them for displays, as you can see in the background. All right, let me show you the other masks over there in the corner there. See? Those are the three, and then I got these way up on top up here. Okay, those two right there are ceramic. Okay, I will eventually move them somewhere else. But that right there is my biggest Frankenstein mask. Okay. Put it back down. That's it on my Herman Monster mask. It is from Ruby's. It runs around 50 bucks. So if you want to invest in it, in my personal opinion, uh, it's worth it if you're going to display it. But if you're wearing the mask, like I said, because it's got eye slits in it, you can see out of it. But the peripherals are a little bit different when you turn left to right. It's just like my creature from the Black Lagoon. I'm going to show you that picture too, okay? I mean, that mask, that picture. That right there, okay? It's a fantastic looking mask, but it's got tiny little eye slits, and you really can't see left to right on that. So it's really hard to actually see out of that mask. So keep in mind when you purchase these masks, if you're going to wear them, that's what I'm letting you know. Uh, this one's okay to wear straightforward. It's a great looking mask if you're wearing a costume and stuff. But peripheral wise, it, it would be hard to see, okay, because of the way it's made, okay. Most of the Frankenstein masks are built that way, with the exception of the ones up here. As you can see, they got big eye slits, okay. Now, the one on the very left over there is a Ruby's, just like this one here. It also had a defect in it, okay. At the left eye, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it is still messed up, and I got to trim it up a little bit. It came in that way, it's just the way they're mass produced. This one here is a Universal Studios version of Frankenstein's mask. It's a fantastic looking mask too. But anyway, 
just keep that in mind if you're going to purchase this to wear it. Uh, just be aware that the peripherals are going to set you off a little bit. Now, size-wise, it fits perfect for a big-headed guy, okay? I got a big head, and for the most part, most of these masks will fit perfect on my head, with a few exceptions, like this one right here. You see the boogeyman down there? The one with the teeth? Not the teeth teeth, but the one next to it, okay? The one with the white eyes. I put that on, and believe it or not, I started suffocating because the mouth itself does not have no ventilating uh, holes in it. So you might want to cut some holes in it if you decide to buy that one. But that's a very tight mask too, so keep that in mind. All right? Another one that's really tight to fit would be this guy right here behind. Right there. You see that Michael Myers right there, that Trick or Treat Studios 2018? That one, because I have a big head, will not fit on your head. It will if you want to stretch it. But um, it's not smart to stretch latex because it will eventually rip on you, okay? So I don't wear that. Like I said, I wear them. Uh, I just kind of display them. And on a rare occasion around Halloween, if you have a party or something, they're available. I can just throw them on. But anyway, this is, my, this is in fact, my Ruby's uh, version of Herman Munster. I've been wanting one of these because I like Herman Munster. And also, he's a Frankenstein. But like I said, I got that other mask coming in once that comes in. I will definitely do a video on that. That is the Mohawk Zombie, okay? And that's also Trick or Treat Studios. I've been one one of them and I actually did some research on it. And I found out that they're, in fact, very hard to find right now. So I went on Big Bad Toy Store and they did have it available and I automatically ordered it, okay? That quick. Because I'm sure they're going to become unavailable because when I did the actual uh, search for them, not too many places were actually selling them for a decent price. And that's also like um, the, um, the zombie girl uh, in The Return of the Living Dead. That one's actually almost 80 bucks for it, but it's a very cool looking mask. I might get that one further down the line. There's also um, the other Return of the Living Dead mask, which is Tar Man. I'm definitely going to get that one from Trick or Treat Studios when the time comes. You'll see all of that as well. Uh, but there is, in fact... Uh, the actual plastic mask from the Rob Zombie movie. It's called Clownville. It's the Clownville mask. It was actually a mask that was made back in the 60s or 70s, I think it was. It's vintage, but they used it in the uh, Michael Myers movies from the Rob Zombie. And that particular mask with little Michael Myers wearing it, I wanted to get one of them. But on Etsy, there is one of those masks, and he was selling it for $249. And I'm like, you're fucking crazy. I ain't buying it for $249. Anyway, I went looking for that particular mask, you know, for the uh, cheaper price. Not too many people are selling it. That is a rarity, believe it or not. Anyway, long story short, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be pushing out some new videos. Right now, I've been concentrating on my masks. But eventually, I'm going to delve into um, some interesting stuff that I have on my bookshelves. Because I just rearranged everything to accommodate this bookshelf. So you will be seeing some new videos based on that stuff too. In the meantime, you have yourselves a good day.